Welcome back everybody to Imperio Ottomano and today we are going to discuss another achievement this time the Master of India which is at the very bottom for some reason here Master of India own and have course on all of India as, as a European nation which can be anything normally European you would think of this Great Britain, France, Spain, Holland, Brandenburg, uh, Denmark, Sweden Anything, anything that's left of, of this imaginary line. But that's actually not the case. Because the Ottomans also count as European. Which makes it, uh, yeah, different different approach. Here you have it. Even uh, even across the Hellespont in Kocheli or whatever. <laughs> no idea about Turkish pronunciations. It's also considered Europe. Furthermore, even further than that, Adana is considered Europe. Maros is considered Europe. Urfa is considered Europe, Trebizond is considered Europe, Abkhazia as well, yeah, okay, well, that is a little less controversial, I mean, Paradox apparently has a slightly bigger definition of Europe than most people would have, but that is very much alright, that just means that you can do it with the Ottomans as well, and we've had a pretty good game, or well, good game, for the first time in my life, I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to make a world conquest, which is also why I set the patch back to 1.18. Because in this patch, the Ottoman ideas have millets, which has a cost, uh, core reduction cost, core cost reduction. Mm, put those three words in any order you like, of minus 33%, combined with minus 25% from the administrative ideas, would mean... That you get to minus 58%. If this was the right choice in the end, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, because you don't have absolutism in this patch, which is a little bit sad. But also, there were just generally less provinces, especially um, with the recent updates in Holland, where they've just merged several extra provinces in, and also Great Britain, same way. I thought that this might be slightly easier, but in the end it didn't really work out because as you can see I started to get into Europe, but all the level 8 forts kind of made it ridiculous, especially when there's a capital on top of it as well, um, like you have here in Wien, Vienna. Why the fuck is this called Beck? Best? Is this like... I mean, I know we have uh, adaptive province names but what is that best is this to is this supposed to simulate the sound of, of the word wean the german word in sort of turkish phonology I'm, I'm not even sure um really not sure but anyway you know this game was kind of high baller because i also tried to get Complete global religious unity at the same time, which kind of cost me my head with religious ideas. I mean, we did pretty well, but there were also just so many rebellions. The rebellions were pretty much never, ever, ever ending, uh, and it ruined my country. Even with a 300k stack running around, I couldn't help but just lose parts of my country. I mean, Baskiria, Kazan, Astrakhan, that stuff wasn't here before. But anyway, India, let's get to the... Uh, regions which you need hindustan india occidental which is spanish for west india uh, the deccan bangla bengal uh, coromandel and uh, to my surprise i believed in the ceylon episode you needed the same regions but the maldives were part of either deccan or coromandel might have had to do with the patch but here it seemed sort of light brownish which i didn't understand so i clicked on it and then i realized look at that for some reason in this patch or maybe in an entire game i'm not even sure anymore is this part of malaya which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever you know speaking of things that don't make sense is also the culture groups culture groups are kind of ridiculous i mean when you look at chinese you have menchu all the way from from here it's in the same culture group as cantonese i mean 90 percent of china is in the same culture group Whereas when you go to India, there are very big differences between people from the north and the south. So maybe you have two big culture groups. But no, they decided to go for one, two, three, four, 
five, six even, with these three provinces, which is, in my eyes, just way too much. Way too much. I mean, there's really not that much cultural difference between somebody from Jampur and somebody from Patna or Dhaka for that matter, you know. But, you know, it's their choice. But it kind of bothers me, especially when you take into account that Malaysia and Indonesia is also all the same cultural group. Even Cham is part of that because of the Austronesian connection. But, uh, yeah, having, that, having said that, all you really need to do here is conquer India. It's pretty straightforward, so you're just going to have to rush on land if you want to play as the Ottomans or you want to go for a really exotic technique. Uh, right around if you want to go for any other European nation uh, sort of through the alleys of colonialism it might be a good idea to specifically colonize this island which is terra incognita now but I believe it's called San Diego and from there you can uh, make a claim on the Maldives and from the Maldives you have access to all these beautiful provinces so you'll have to enter India from the south and hope there isn't one gigantic power block that might sort of obstruct your expansion. But if you get there early, India is usually pretty fragmented, which is quite good. So in my Ottomans game, let's just put it at speed free here. You know, you have you start out with a lot of cores um, in the general Anatolia area as well, which is really good. Uh, Ramazan, I made uh, a, a vessel state. So here you see me expanding through Arabia. But yeah, honestly, a world conquest is uh, just a little too much for me at this point. It's uh, it's hard, man. It's hard. There's just so many provinces. It's, uh, it's insane. I've had good games where I expanded a lot, but getting everything on the map is just sort of ridiculous. Although here we're in a really good position in 1544. This is usually where you see an AI Ottomans be at in 1700, so that's good. You cross the Indus, the one thing that Alexander the Great didn't do. And if you arrive in a fragmented India, then it's really not that hard, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly that focused on India right now, even though I'm going to take a bit more. Go to the south, kind of work my way around Malwa. Try to attack different nations all the time. Bengal's pretty strong. Oh yes, here you see me attacking Ming. This looks absolutely weird. Complete border gore, but I have Beijing. But I mean, that's that's what a world conquest or an attempted world, quest, world conquest is all about. Weird looking borders. You're all over the place from left to right. I mean, you're just trying to grab what you can get as quickly as possible and hope that the puzzle will complete itself by the end of the game. So here I sort of uh, ignored India for a bit and tried to sandwich Ming, <laughs> which uh, was a good idea, but it didn't really work in the end. So here I decide to take less bits and pieces of India and there you are already. It's really quite straightforward. Uh, not that difficult as some others, but you'll have to rush pretty quickly through Persia uh, and then uh, the Indus region into India and take everything before the end of the game. Which, how difficult it really is, depends greatly on, on what exactly happens in the game. I mean, if the Timurids um, become a great power, I mean, in the old patch they usually sort of collapse. In the new patches they sometimes do, but sometimes they manage to actually remain quite stable and integrate their vessels. It can be difficult. Also, Delhi can get quite big and all that stuff. But generally, I mean, even if you play with the Ottomans in current patches, it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, let's look at ideas quickly. So obviously, administrative is very uh, useful for the uh, Corkos reduction if you want to expand because you need to get there by land in the first place. Uh, also, quantity obviously uh, synergizes quite well with the traditional Ottoman ideas. Offensive is always great for conquering. I'm really, I'm really starting to learn to appreciate offensive more and more. I mean, offensive, I believe, is one of those idea groups that when you just start playing, when you just start out, you're like, yeah, take offensive, offensive, it's a shit. And then you get to a certain level where you're like, huh, you shouldn't take offensive. It's just sort of like too offensive, too aggressive. And then once you get a little more experienced, 
you start to appreciate offensive again. There's, there's sort of a gap. Religious can be really good, but um, yeah, you often have to sort of sacrifice it for humanists because they don't really work well together in my eyes. But you do get Akasa's belly against all heretics and heavens as well, I believe. So therefore, you just uh, you don't have to worry about constantly creating claims and then putting a claim in and then taking that, even though that does reduce the uh, amount of admin points it costs to core the nation or the province the nation that'd be great um apart from that yeah maybe commercial if you want to get a little bit of extra money or whatever it's it's more or less whatever fits the scenario but in fact it, this this achievement is pretty straightforward just rush like a madman to india take everything before the end of the game which should be possible if uh, if you're playing for the longer durée it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, you have to 1820. Probably a little bit harder if you try to do it as one of the European nations. But even then, it uh, it should be quite doable if you just take your time. I mean, at some point, if you're uh, playing as a European nation, you're going to have a, a military technology advantage. So just capitalize on that. See when they're weak and, and get in. So I guess that's really all there is to say for it for now. Uh, Thanks for watching guys, see you next time, there might be uh, another achievement video up soon, but we'll see, you know, I just never know what my schedule is going to bring me. Thanks guys!